This is Nick. Nick is a happy child that enjoys learning. Most of the time, he enjoys solitude so he can freely think about anything and everything. He's a brilliant child, excelling in a lot of things that has to do with mental intelligence. He notices patterns easily and somehow figures out answers to questions without even knowing how he arrives to the answers. In school, he's great at what piques his interest. And at a young age, a lot of things were interesting because they were new to him. But once the patterns were figured out, Nicholas would get bored and work on a new project. So he has a tendency of figuring things out and not acting on the conclusions. Because for Nicholas, the fun part is noticing and figuring out the patterns and not necessarily putting it in action. Thoughts will come in and out of his mind like a highway, and he'd love entertaining those thoughts. Nick didn't only learn from doing things, he was also really good at learning from other people. He was really good at noticing patterns and the best situation when and where to use his learnings. As long as Nick had time with his brain and imagination, he's fine. Then Nick entered elementary school, and he noticed a few things. He noticed that some of the topics that he loved talking about wasn't interesting to other kids, and what they talked about didn't interest him. It didn't bother him too much early in his life, but he eventually started feeling strange, like something was wrong with him. Eventually, that feeling became loneliness. Not only did he feel outcasted by his peers, but also by adults. He was taught that adults were more understanding and knowledgeable, but that didn't seem quite true in his experience. Nick became more confused and anxious as time went by because he noticed a pattern that he didn't want to accept. And that pattern is that other people were adjusting well in society besides him. Nicholas is the problem. And with that realization, he became lonelier than ever before. Although feeling alone, not everything was wrong with the world. Nick had a childhood friend that was always there for him. Her name is Fiona, and she's been Nick's best friend since birth. They grew up together, and Nick can't remember a life without her. As children, they were inseparable. Nick would focus on the world and being curious, whereas Fiona would help Nicholas understand how he felt about the world. Similar to Nick, Fiona seemed a bit out of place when around other people, because she wasn't the best at reading the room. But that was never an issue for Nick, because he admired Fiona for how comfortable she was with her own identity. If she felt something deeply enough, there was no reasoning with her. She loved what she loved and would stand by it with a force not even heaven could move. Fiona saw beauty in the world difficult to describe with words. It was usually felt. So whenever she sees another person comfortable with themselves, willing to put their creativity out there, not afraid of looking like a fool, she becomes enamored by that person. She would want to be next to that person, but chooses to admire from afar. Fiona is not always sunshine and rainbows. When she feels alone or misunderstood, everyone and everything is dead to her. She just wants to live her life the way she wants to, without any judgment. When those moments happen, She would soak in her misery, and as any good friend would do, Nicholas would be right there next to her. Neither of the two will ever let the other feel misery alone. Nick and Fiona are both shy, but Fiona more so. Whereas Nick would speak up if he felt like it was needed, Fiona didn't know how to express herself. Since Fiona had a difficult time communicating, they developed their own language to communicate with each other, through symbolism and art. Fiona would write music, poetry, or use art to express herself. Although Nick didn't understand the meaning behind some of the things Fiona did, he would learn to embrace everything that she loved. Nick would actively seek new music, new art, or anything that he believed Fiona might be interested in. In return, Fiona expressed her gratitude by actually listening to his ideas and helping him figure out his emotional stance on things. Although a great pair, the problem is that they both lived in the clouds. They typically don't take action, and when they did, it usually didn't end up well. They often got in trouble because they knew what they should do, but didn't know how to do it or felt like doing it their own way. Sometimes Fiona would do something out of pure rage, and Nick would always be by her side taking the blame together. So between these two, the highs are very high, and the lows are very low. But similar to any pair of best friends, they had each other, for better or for worse. Then one summer day, as if by fate, a new kid arrives to their school. Someone lovely and more temperate. Her name is Teresa, and Teresa was like nothing Nick has ever seen before. She was a firecracker, an unstoppable force. She didn't stop for anyone or anything. If she wanted something, nothing gets in her way. Nothing in the entire universe seemed insurmountable to her. Nick was infatuated, and after their first conversation, so was she. Teresa loved all the ideas that came from Nick and loved that he always knew the best way to get something done. Unlike herself, Teresa would just power through a brick wall if needed. The pairing of these two could best be described in one word. Unstoppable. If Teresa wanted to join the soccer team, Nick would create a coaching plan. If she wanted to improve her grades, he would tutor her. 
Teresa is able to get more tasks accomplished in a shorter amount of time because of Nick. And in return, Teresa will be Nick's biggest cheerleader. Not only did Nick find someone to share his ideas to, but also someone who would stand up for him. Out on dates, Nick would be too afraid to tell the wait staff that they got his order wrong. But that was never an issue when Teresa was around. Without hesitation, she would always make sure he got the right order. And this doesn't only apply to food orders. It's everything in life. Nick had a habit of just observing and not engaging with the world, even if things were wrong. But not with Teresa. Teresa is always there to make sure things are taken care of. Something as simple as performing daily chores usually had Teresa as the driving force. Nick loved a lot of things about Teresa, but the thing he admired the most about her is how much she cared. Although she had a tough exterior, she's a very righteous person and just wants the best for everyone. For her, everyone has potential and she refused to let anyone she cared about not live up to that potential. If someone she cared about wanted something, she would get it for them. No questions asked and never expecting anything in return. You can always tell how much she cares by her actions. Growing up with Nick, Fiona knows that Nick is a timid person with lots of goals and little action. So she instantly noticed how great Teresa is for him. Whenever Nick and Teresa work on a plan, Fiona would step aside and just watch from the sideline at all of everything they accomplished together. Sometimes, she would check in and make sure that they are both working on a project that they are proud of. Her check-ins are random and sometimes would annoy Nick and Teresa, but they both knew it comes from a loving place. Teresa and Fiona developed a sisterly relationship where they both hung out together without Nick and even got annoyed of each other from time to time. Teresa would get annoyed at Fiona for not taking action because she needs a lot of time to process her feelings, and Fiona would get annoyed of Teresa for being too bossy and making them work on projects that none of them cared about. Whenever Fiona gets too into her negative feelings, Teresa would drag the three of them to wherever Fiona wants to go. Most of the time, it's just somewhere pretty where Fiona can just admire the world. Fiona does the same thing for Teresa as well. Whenever Fiona feels like Nick is ignoring Teresa too much, she would make the three of them go on a journey that Teresa would enjoy. Usually a trip leading to some type of accomplishment, such as hiking a mountain or going on a trail. Teresa respects the lifelong friendship between Nicholas and Fiona and patiently waits on the sideline whenever they need to vent to the other person. Nicholas and Fiona would have deep discussions about topics that Teresa would never understand. Teresa coined the discussions as the Nick-Fiona loop. So while Nicholas and Fiona are having their deep emotional discussions, Teresa is patiently waiting outside, ready to begin fixing the problem. Although Nick and Teresa are in a happy and healthy relationship, they both notice that Fiona can sometimes feel lonely. Fiona doesn't put herself out there much in terms of dating and shies away whenever someone shows interest. So Nick and Teresa takes it upon themselves to get to know the person that Fiona is interested in and act as a representative until she's ready to make a move. Nick will figure out the person's wants, needs, dreams, or whatever information he can find. Then Teresa will make the potential partner prove their intentions by creating a series of tests and creating excuses for Fiona to contact or be around that person. While that's happening, Fiona would be in her room trying to figure out how she feels about everything. Whatever the outcome might be, Nicholas and Teresa will always be there for Fiona. As life passes by, they turn into mature adults and are as inseparable as ever. Not too long into adulthood, a miracle happens. Nick and Teresa conceives a child. Teresa gives birth to a beautiful baby boy, a boy they named Sean. Because Fiona has always been there for Nicholas and Teresa, it's a no-brainer that she's the godmother. And as any great auntie should, Fiona loves and cares for Sean deeply. Fiona is always there for Sean when he needs her. When Sean wants to dress a certain way, Auntie Fiona would convince his parents to buy him the clothing. When Sean wants to experience the world, Auntie Fiona will make it her priority to take him out. There are instances where Sean does something while the others aren't looking, and Auntie Fiona will be the one cleaning up the mess the next day. Fiona appreciates how much of the world she gets to experience because of how adventurous Sean is, and Sean adores Auntie Fiona. Teresa and Nick puts a lot of effort into parenting Sean, but still has a tendency of getting sucked into their own projects. When Sean is ignored for too long, he throws tantrums where they all have to stop what they're doing and focus on what Sean wants. Sean just loves experiencing the world, and he feels like it doesn't happen often enough. In those moments, Sean will make them engage the world as if there were no tomorrow. Sean adores his family and takes care of them in a few different ways. He's the person in the family that makes sure that they eat throughout the day. He's the person that makes sure that they dress socially presentable. And Sean is the person in the family that forces him to go outside to get sunlight from time to time. It's always a struggle for him to get his point across because his opinion is heard, but usually not acted upon. Sean knows, however, that dad can't always make the best decision without getting information from the outside world, mom needs some downtime for fun, and that auntie needs a little bit of nudge to engage with the things that she cares about. Sean gets the family out of the house so that they don't miss engaging with reality. 
Sean makes sure the family doesn't miss living life. The family works really well together whenever they're working towards the same goal. If Sean wants to be part of a crowd, Nick will find a concert that Sean and Fiona will both enjoy. Nick will make all the preparations, such as figuring out the date of the event and where to park the car. Then, Teresa will take the lead by purchasing the tickets and making sure they get to the event on time. At the event, Fiona would be jumping for joy singing the lyrics to every song and buying merch for memory. And Sean will be dancing all over the place, making sure the entire family has a good time. Life is great when the entire family works as a unit. As with any family, there are struggles that they have to overcome. But the beauty of this family is that there's a person that has a clear vision of where they want to be. There's a person that's always leading the charge. There's a person that reminds them to love what they love without apology. And a person that constantly reminds them to engage with the world. This is the INTJ Cognitive Function family. And this is the end of the story.